Congratulations on uh, stress positions. I also really loved uh, my trip to Spain a couple of years ago at, at Thunder. Wow. And uh, yeah, gr great to see you back again, uh, working together. And uh, could could you take me back a little bit to like uh, how you first met and and what you worked on, what you worked on first? Because I it wasn't uh, my trip to Spain, right? You'd already done. Um... So we had done a bunch. We'd known each other for a while, John. Well, can I? Is, oh, this, is this video being used? Uh, if you if you're happy for it to be used. Oh yeah, I just want to quickly put it in my. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to do that because it'll make it as a blockbuster. Uh, uh, keep going, Theta. No, I want you to answer this question about how we met and how we came to be friends. Well, we met, I was working the front desk at the Atlantic Theater Company after completing my training there and <laughs> doing the summer intensive when I was working the front desk. And I kind of don't even remember, I mean, I have vivid memories of like you at the front desk. And I yeah. just remember like the twinkle in your eyes. <laughs> and, just, and like the kind of like the, um, a kind of mischievousness in a, in a place that was very, just subtle. It was, it was, it was, wow. it was we both very devoted to that program. Um, and, um, and, and I think both had very kind of transformative experiences there artistically. Yeah. Um, but I also think it was it was a very kind of th that program was heavily like it was built on this like principles of discipline and and yeah. so I think I felt immediately like uh oh like I have a little ally and maybe some um, more subversive tendencies I don't know for that program but um, that's where we met and then we and then Theta was the assistant director on a production of Breck's Caucasian Chalk Circle in which I played many different characters and played the snare drum wearing a Henley. <laughs> <laughs> a beautiful Henley, a really flattering Henley. Thank you. But I think that's where we truly started to hang out extracurricularly. Yeah. And, uh, and then from then we went on just to be great friends and, and we co-hosted or, or Theta was rather my kind of um, thankless sidekick for a variety show in Midtown for years. This is the best uh, gig. This it the was best the show. best gig ever. We really had the time of our lives and, and got to, you know, talk on stage together and, and, um, and I, I mean, never get to be drunk on stage anymore. It's so sad. I know. It was so crazy. I loved it. We were really drunk and, um, <laughs> and, you know, even there kind of, even on, in a kind of like really, debaucherous or silly uh, a variety show kind of setting, Theta always was able to kind of elevate what I was doing or kind of locate the, the, locate the, the deeper kind of critique in my clowning, you know, and then kind of help expand on it conversationally and, and deliver it to the audience. And, and I think that's what, not to, you not to be so um, managerial in, in this um, interview, but to bring us back, I think that is what, you know, this movie does too. She, she takes this kind of like clown thing that I do and, and, and elevates it and contextualize it in something very deep. Um, so that's, that's our little history. No, it's always helpful if you, you know, go, go to a next question for me, because then it's <laughs> <laughs> collaborative. I love, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we also worked on a play together. We, I, I produced um, a Wallace Shawn, a revival of a Wallace Shawn play called Marie and Bruce. That was this was all Theta's idea, and Theta played Marie in it. And um, I, I would say that in like that was 2018, and that was I think the real beginning of like a more yeah. serious collaboration. Um, yeah, coming together for that, and in the and in the and in the basking in in the glow of Wallace Shawn, the author of that play, brought us together. And is there anything more you want to say about first meeting Theta or, or about why you think the collaboration works well, as John was kind of uh, touching up, what, what you sort of bring out in each other, maybe? Well, I will just say that John's, I, I don't, I feel like I've told this story a bunch of times, but that John's, my first exposure to John's performing was in an audi that audition for Chalk Circle for the romantic lead part, um, where... I just thought he gave the most beautiful, romantic, tender, sincere, sweet, um, uh, incredible uh, audition of this scene of like a love parting. And 
uh, didn't get the part, didn't get the role. <laughs> um, I had to play the drum instead. But like my first impression of John was as like an extremely gifted, like gorgeous actor. And then it came as a huge surprise to me the extent to which you were like so funny. But to which I, like like John's comic comic gifts have always been. Uh, a delightful surprise for me because my first impression was of like somebody who was like such a an amazing actor. So I think that um, I think that's what I think that's what we're we're using both of those things in this movie. <laughs> and yeah, on screen in this, I love the kind of friction between your characters, which really sort of charges the energy. I think, and there's a bit of a sort of a best frenemy sort of sibling kind of thing going on in some ways I, th I think yeah and could you talk a little bit about yeah maybe just cr creating that on-screen relationship at what it was like to do I it just I remember it being very easy to act yeah. with you yeah it was it was kind of like we it was the thing we gave the least attention to and I think that's why it's good too um yeah I think we just we had a lot of other things do, to do in the middle of all the acting. It's like John yeah. was also a producer on the movie and was like interfacing with everybody on that. I was directing and trying to deal with all of that. So like, I actually felt like the moments of serenity and tranquility and peace were in the were in the actual I scenes agree. together. I agree. Yeah, um, I mean, I also think it's nice. I think Carla really. Um warms terry like carla provides a kind of in the privacy of their friendship he he can drop his kind of like like proud matriarch role yeah uh, and he can he can be a little more he can like let the guard down and be a little like nastier and and at least like at least get it out so it doesn't go to his back yes and there's something there's something really it's like okay if it, when i hang out with the people that i knew in my 20s when I was like a nightlife drunk. I can have fun in a way that I don't have access to in my now my professional normal life. And when Carla comes over to the house, Terry and offers Terry like alcohol, he goes, I'm cutting back. She holds the glass right under his mouth and he takes it and he starts drinking from it. And it's like, what one of the main things there is that she's giving him permission to drink to relax and drink and he gets proceeds to get very drunk like real like almost blackout drunk and he's so happy yeah. to just have this person who is a little bit of a thorn in his side and like is but he's just happy to have this this uh, drinking friend <laughs> though um i don't know i think that's one of my favorite parts of the movie it's just that that the way that carla gives him permission to like actually relax and be the kind of person maybe he was in his 20s yeah when he is what he's really trying to do at the start of the movie is clean slate new me no more fun no more party you know yeah <laughs> Um, I love the way that you use the uh, kind of 2020 period detail uh, in this. And um, I wondered if you'd maybe talk a little bit about your approach to it, because I mean, it's never just about sort of time setting or, you know, your period setting. It always kind of amps up the humor or what's going on on, on screen. Um, yeah. I would say that, that the fear of contamination here, which is like, it, it's there in the sense of the pandemic and all of the masking and wiping and spraying and distancing and all that kind of stuff. I think that the fear of contamination is a more general concern in the movie. And the contamination is maybe, uh, I think that, for example, like there is a little thing, it's not totally consistent throughout the movie, but whenever somebody is exposed to like a sexually lurid thought or something like that there is a cough there there's a, and, and like almost the fear is of being contaminated by the wrong form of desire the the wrong uh saying the wrong thing embodying an ideology that you don't you don't want to be associated with so so there is this like distancing that happens um uh uh in all of those respects I, I that's how i sort of see the virus playing out in the movie it's it's a, it's a little bit of an anal analogy for this fear of moral contamination that comes from the outside or from within oneself um anything you wanted to add to that uh, john at all 
No. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. I thought it was just a little pretentious sounding, but yeah, no, I, I love it. <laughs> Perfect. I also just think like you know there there's a, a kind of bizarre. I mean, I, I guess it's not bizarre. I, I, I guess I understand in theory why people who are making work about this time avoided the stuff that's maybe highly comedic because it's also a time that's associated with mass death. Um, but, you know, there was there was a kind of, I think there was a, a large kind of larger cultural repression of our, of, of um, I, I mean, the, the that was a very kind of strangely, uh, sublimated time or is that the word i'm looking for repressed time i've never known how to use that word but yeah i i always use it's... it incorrectly and i'm proud to do it again here but um <laughs> the queer review but but i mean i i there was a very there was a very strange quality that time of like kind of the posturing we did about covid safety versus the kind of totally unavoidable just like kind of looseness that would happen at home like the kind of the logic of spraying down the vegetables like immediately fell apart and you were like touching the wrong thing you're like oh well whatever you know there and then there was yeah. also kind of like the the political moment of, of of uh you know everyone kind of uh i don't know using their social media you know uh for the good of the culture and then and then and then i think also pe behind closed doors feeling kind of queasy about social media like about at, like the kind of the forced social participation and like a kind of in the discourse yeah um i don't know there so there, there was just a very we were all very divided we were very unintegrated you know in, in that moment and that is always a, a kind of great starting point for comedy but it, it's never it was never it wasn't being done i think during that time um and i was so excited by the kind of like noises off quality of of this script you know of like the slamming doors and the different floors and the the spraying down yeah. that was real that was happening yeah. and then the pop banging starts and then you've got the yeah. heavens coming through the window and the <laughs> yeah. yeah firecracker or a firework coming through yeah. um, one thing i really love about um the, the film and i find really refreshing as well is um, how kind of messy and flawed your characters are and you know they don't always say the right thing or you know bring that question what is the right, <laughs> right thing to say and I wondered how sort of conscious you, you were about that element of it because I feel like you know new career cinema we got sort of a rebellion against like characters uh, having to sort of be socially acceptable LGBTQ character yeah. and it feels like yeah maybe over re recent years we've kind of gone that way, way again that characters have to be a little bit more socially acceptable or something but I, I think that's maybe why I found it refreshing yeah i think that the i feel like the there was a lot of w work done in the 2010s in terms of like this new visibility of like uh especially like maybe with let's say trans characters on screen to to try and reverse the horrible way that trans people have been characterized up to that point and like that the the fact that that work was let's say it was i don't know if it was effective in like in the long run for trans rights or for like because we because with every bit of visibility there's an increased risk of backlash and we've certainly seen that recently and i expect to see it again but i think within the world of media in the world of film and, and movies like i thought enough work had been done that i actually could speak in this way or characterize a trans person trans lady for example on screen in this way doing badly and also i would say like what's even maybe more uncomfortable about it is like doing bad do, behaving badly and being likable mm -hmm. and being charismatic like and being funny like uh i thought that i thought that i thought that it could work um and i th i think it's hitting at the right moment in in the evolution of like you know trans mainstream trans representation i think it's situated right where it needs to be Yes. Yeah, there uh, more? I know there's probably more I wanted to say there, but anything you wanted to add that uh, John about um, about Terry or just on that? Yeah. Well, I mean, I think Theta and I. This is always this is like part of why we initially became friends. Is I think we both felt this like as people who wanted to make art, you know, we felt this mounting pressure in the culture for that art to be an artifact of like 
this moment and and queer visibility and um and representation matters and you know and yeah. I think I think um we were very angry about that and maybe still are, <laughs> but also maybe this film helped us work through some of that anger and express some of that anger and, and we'll move on. Yeah. Well, no, there's a thing also was like queer, queer came to mean something in media. Like yeah. I've, I've, I'm sure you're, you were aware, like that, that it, it was substituted was originally like a derogative term became a, a term of nobility. And like, it's like, queer joy it's like you start hearing this phrase like queer joy and you go okay well you can talk about queer joy all you want but only at the expense of talking about the other half of queerness which is actually furtive and dangerous and permanently forbidden or like left off stage so it's almost like if you have um if you have a stage that is the mainstream the only the half of queerness that is acceptable to the mainstream will be brought on stage the part of it that has to do with forbidden illicit desires that will never be socially acceptable and that are that doom you just as a virtue of having them like that part of queerness is is not going to be brought on on stage like biden is not going to bring on that kind of uh, queerness uh, to the you know what i'm saying and so here actually it's just that it's not like anything horribly taboo or despicable happens in this movie but that people's people's emotions are unacceptable to themselves mm. terry's character is very clearly burying or repressing a thought in this movie and that thought is I have a very handsome young man in my house, right? Like he is a mod. I have a basically naked model in my house right now. He's my nephew, right? So it's not acceptable to think of him in that way, which is true, right? But Terry is not somebody who's very good at sorting that through. So the more he, the more he pushes down on that thought, the more people start popping in and saying the exact same thing. Wow, there's a really handsome man in your house. He must be very handsome. I can't wait to meet him. You know, and the more he has to sort of fend off all of those people until finally at the end of the movie, I think it actually emerges out uh, uh, that that sort of thought comes out in a very strange and um, uh, p pitiable way. Uh, not to give anything away, but I think that there is a gesture from Terry to, to Bahlul that is both a little bit lurid and very intimate, very lonely. And uh, so I think that when I'm talking about that kind of thing, I'm talking about queerness in the way that I, that I want to, not in terms of queer joy or in terms of visibility, in terms of representation, but in terms of a moral sexual taboo, mm -hmm. and I think that activates the movie. And I um, sorry, not to belabor this, but I, but I, 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 what I was so excited about with this movie too is like I've, I've basically I am, my whole career is about playing kind of the unlikable gay, you know, and and that is a prison of my own making. Um, <laughs> like it, it is what I am drawn to doing, you know. Um, I think as like a, a good little Presbyterian, you know, from the South. Um, and, and so I've done plenty of that, but what was so exciting to me was that Theta's script goes one step further. Like she's saying, Carla is lovable. And that's, what's actually subversive about her. She's really lovable and actually warm. And she is the kind of social lubricant that makes these very otherwise kind of antagonistic characters kind of come together in unexpected ways. And I also think, and it, 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 if this is not the case, it's only a failure of my performance, not of Theta's writing, but like, I also think that Terry is, there is a kind of poor Terry quality that is like ironic kind of at the top of the movie. You're kind of like laughing at his expense. And then by the end, I think you really are like, oh my God, poor Terry. Like I, you know, I think, and, and that was what was thrilling to me was like, we're not, this isn't just a kind of reactive, like, yeah, we're unlikable, like, you know, right. which I think is a lot of work. Uh, there is a lot of that work and, and we've probably maxed out on that work culturally, but this, this, I think, take complicates it further, you know? Yeah. Um, thanks so much, uh, John and Theta and congratulations again on stress positions. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you, James. Beautiful to speak to you today. Thank you.